These videos and photos were all taken with Sony's latest camera phone, the Xperia 1 Mark V. That's without any add-ons or accessories and handheld. It's pretty impressive what smartphone cameras are capable of these days, but the Xperia goes a bit beyond your typical phone. It has a total of three different camera apps, Photo Pro, Video Pro, and Cinema Pro, each one with its own set of in-depth options to choose from. In our Xperia 1 Mark V full review, we sort of glanced over what these apps can offer, but we felt we had to do a deep dive into what these apps can and can't do, because shooting with them is a whole different experience. This video is our honest take, not sponsored or endorsed by Sony in any way. I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out what these apps could provide, and is having so many on your phone really that necessary? I'll start off with the Photo Pro app, which is the default camera app. It starts in basic mode by default, which is similar to what you'd find on your typical smartphone interface. This year, the interface will switch orientation when you turn the phone between horizontal and vertical. Here on the right, we have some basic controls and some options not so different from other camera phones. There is a night view mode available. In auto, it can trigger when it's dark enough and you can get additional highlight retention and brighter skies. But even when it's off, nighttime photos are quite slow to capture. Sony's burst shooting is interesting. Many phones have burst shooting options, but here you get Sony's class-leading autofocus tech. You can burst shoot with autofocus and auto exposure, taking up to 20 frames per second with either camera. Speaking of Sony's great autofocus, you can use eye autofocus and face autofocus. There are some nice options for tapping on the screen to set the autofocus too including focus tracking, which will follow the subject you choose, even if it or the camera are moving. And there's an option called Product Showcase. When this is enabled, the autofocus will prioritize the product in the shot, rather than the face. Beyond Photo Pro's basic mode, there are other modes that are quite like what you'd get on a real Sony camera. You can see this especially in the layout of the settings. In the auto mode, most of the settings are already taken care of for you, but you still have a few options to play with. Within this menu, you get the drive mode, again, the burst shooting options. Then there's program mode, where you can choose even more options, even though the layout is very similar to the auto mode. These include the ISO, exposure compensation, and white balance. Even further is the shutter priority mode. Here, the camera takes care of the ISO setting for you, but you can manipulate the shutter speed depending on the artistic effect you'd like to achieve. And then there is manual mode, where you can change everything you want. No limits here. Finally, there's a memory recall where you can save the settings you like as presets for later. The Photo Pro app focuses primarily on photos, though you can record video as well. You will find the toggle only within the basic mode. Although this isn't one of Sony's specialized video apps, you still get to toggle some options, including the new S Cinetone color profile, which we didn't expect in this part of the app suite. Recording video through Photo Pro is okay on the fly, but Sony's other apps are tailor-made for video. Let's start off with Video Pro. The Video Pro interface looks quite different from Photo Pro. Here, many different options can be adjusted straight from the bottom of the viewfinder. On the right side, you get a choice between autofocus and manual focus. And there are plenty of options here. They're spread out over two pages. These directly affect the picture and sound of your recordings. If you don't want to play with all of these though, you can just toggle the auto mode and start shooting. But back to the manual settings. We haven't seen any other phone offer so many options for adjusting the white balance. You can use a preset or change the color temperature and the tint. Or you can even take the white balance manually. Within Video Pro, you can choose between different picture profiles. As I already mentioned, new for this year, you get S Cinetone as well, besides Rec. 709 and HLG. S Cinetone provides a cinematic look without the need for color grading later. You get nicer skin tones, lower contrast, and smooth roll-off of highlights and shadows. And when shooting video at night, with s Cinetone enabled, you get brighter and more detailed shadows, and the highlights aren't as blown out. Here you can see the difference from Rec. 709. We're happy to see s Cinetone here and on the Photo Pro app, but for some reason is missing from the other app, Cinema Pro. Let's look at options for stabilization, but they depend on the frame rate. At 30 FPS, you get the high quality option, but if you go higher to 60 FPS, this one's grayed out, and you're stuck with standard. And if you go higher to 120 for slow-mo, there's no stabilization at all. The high quality stabilization works well on the main cam. It comes with a crop, but is more stable than the standard one. 
And here's what it looks like with the stabilization off. There are also other options available which let you personalize the overall Video Pro app, including monitoring. Speaking of monitoring, you get a histogram here for exposure, as well as focus peaking. Before we move on to the next app, Cinema Pro, we have to point out a feature that's missing here, and that's Rack Focus. Rack Focus is available in the Cinema Pro app. It allows you to switch between two focus points with a smooth transition. You have control of the focus plane, here with the slider, or you have finer controls with the arrows. Another option is to tap on the scene and adjust from there. You also have control of the duration of the transition. Cinema Pro works differently from the other two apps. You have to start off by creating a new video project. It's important that you start recording with the resolution and the frame rate that you want to use the whole time, because you can't change them later within the same project. The only thing you can do is switch the FPS to 120 for slow motion. Just like on Video Pro, you have plenty of options for your recording. You don't get an auto toggle on the top like you do in Video Pro. If you want to just point and shoot, first you have to go into each individual setting and select auto from there. You do have an advantage over the Video Pro app in that there's a memory recall function, like in Photo Pro, and you have up to nine slots here to save things into. There are quite a few other differences from the Video Pro app. For example, you don't have controls on the bottom besides focus peaking. You'll find the settings all here on the side and not within multiple pages, but just one. You can also get more detailed settings up here in the corner. Besides just a histogram, to gauge the exposure, you also have an EV scale. Another thing worth mentioning is the aspect ratio. Instead of 16 by nine, which we'd get on the other apps, Cinema Pro videos come out in 21 by nine. That's 2.37 by one, close to the cinematic cinemascope aspect ratio. When you're done making your recordings within the project, from here, you can easily stitch them together into one continuous clip. Slow-mo recordings aren't included with regular ones though. So those are the Xperia 1 Mark V's three camera apps. They definitely provide a lot, but they're not without their flaws. For example, just like with Sony's digital cameras, turning on a certain feature can disable others until you turn the first one back off manually. This can lead to fumbling around in the menus. And no matter how advanced these apps are, we couldn't find a time-lapse mode anywhere. There are some other nitpicks as well. In Photo Pro, if you zoom with the telephoto cam, you can't go back to one-time zoom without scrolling down a little bit, or tapping on the screen to minimize. Burst shooting mode doesn't work with RAW format, only JPEG. You can't record video within the advanced modes of Photo Pro. You have to switch to basic mode or to one of the other apps, which takes some extra clicks. Now in Video Pro, if you misclick the options in the viewfinder, you may end up with an autofocus box on the screen instead. You can turn off the box, but it can be annoying. Zooming is a bit tricky on the Video Pro app. The Xperia 1 Mark V's telephoto cam can provide variable zoom between 85 and 125 millimeters, but it's easy to overshoot the 125 and go into digital zoom. And we're not sure why Rack Focus isn't on the Video Pro app and as Cinetone isn't available on the Cinema Pro app. Within Cinema Pro, one issue is that if you want to use focus peaking when setting up rack focus, you have to actually go out of the menu, turn the peaking on, and then go back into it. And the fact that if you've already recorded something, you can't change the FPS or resolution without first making a whole new project is rather limiting for spontaneous shooting. We also wish that there were more sophisticated monitoring options on top of the histogram or EV, such as false color, waveform, or even zebra. A bit of a side note is that there's still no physical way to attach an ND filter to any of the Xperia phones themselves, and that's crucial for videographers to be able to maintain a proper shutter speed according to the frame rate and get a natural motion blur. Finally, the interfaces of these camera apps have a lot of inconsistencies and quirks which are confusing, especially for new users. There's definitely plenty of room to streamline the whole experience and make it more intuitive. And if Sony combined the Video and Cinema Pro apps into one, I don't think many people would complain. Sony's approach of doing things too differently is definitely not ideal for your average user, but if you're willing to dig into them, the advanced controls of these three apps allow you to go beyond what's possible on a typical smartphone, and you can get some pretty nice results. Thanks for watching, guys. If you'd like to learn more about the Xperia 1 Mark V, you can check out our full review. And there are plenty of other great camera phones as well, which you can compare in our shootout video. See you next time.